uh, if you'd like to stand and tell us who you are, introduce yourself, we'd be just delighted. Uh, we are Bernie and Barbara Black, and uh, we are here doing family history research. We're from Miami, Florida, and uh, our family lived just a couple of miles from here. Uh, the name was Carnahan, and uh, also one of my great grand aunts, Ruby Carnahan, married into the Davison family. So Davison, and then my Colbert family, the other side, lived just south of here in Pratt County. And my grandmother, Kitty, was born in Pratt, um, 1903. So we're here on the family history tour and uh, enjoying it very much. And very happy to see you all here and in the service today. And uh, it warms our heart to know that um, this church is still here and that you're worshiping here. Thank you for allowing us to be with you today. Thank you. I'm standing on the backs of your, on the shoulders of your grand parents. I'm here because of that. We're here. So um, 
the more she can interact with and talk with, the more her he helps her learn Spanish and she helps him learn English. So that's interesting. Um, right now he took some classes to prepare for the university entrance test that they have to take here, like our ACT. He took it once without any prep and failed, so this time he's taking some prep classes in Tina, which is about two hours from here, so he's gone most of the time. He goes to class every day at 2 and gets home around midnight or 1 a.m. Then he does the same thing the next day. He's very dedicated. He wants to study at a U.S. university. That's his big dream, but there are lots of roadblocks, like the cost of university in the States. He, um, all of the um, sustainable roots people are helping him to prepare and try to get through the roadblocks so that he can come to university here. And um, students in Ecuador, or people in Ecuador have an 80% greater chance of employment if they know English. So it really is an important thing in Ecuador for them to learn English. Um, We've been finishing up a lot of projects here. I'll post some pictures today of our complete kitchen and wall mural. They've moved into a, a kind of a shacky house that they're working on and fixing up. Their bathroom looks really bad. Um, they look, uh, they both look pretty great. Um, she's been running, um, doing lots of uh, preparation. She wants to take her vacation. I'm summarizing. She wants, they want to take their vacation and climb Cotopaxi, which is an 18,000 foot volcano. But she's having knee issues, so you can pray for his knee. She's backed up on her training so, so that her knee can heal and so forth. But there is, I wanted to tell you this part because, Pastor, uh, yesterday we were supposed to go hiking with Don Chito, who is the cutest older man, grandpa-like figure in town, yet a total amazing hiker. He's over 70, but he still goes hiking on the volcanoes. He's hiked the closest volcano four times, which has a 70-kilometer hiking path. Anyway, they were prepared to go hiking with him, and he was taking them up the volcano, but she, once she got her pack on, uh, it was too much for her knee, so she had to end up staying home. But he takes the students, and he takes the uh, sustainable roots people, and he shows them the area of hiking. Um, today or tomorrow, I'm go oh, she's, I'll summarize this, too. She's been baking, but it's hard to get flour, and it, it's impossible to get soda because soda is used in the drug industry in Ecuador, so soda is banned. So it's hard to bake cakes, which is Emma's thing, uh, without soda. So anyway, she's been trying, she's been experimenting and teaching the ladies in the village how to bake, and, and she's been figuring out some pretty good ones. How is everyone at Antrim? I just realized that if I was at home, we'd just be getting home from church. I miss church a lot. I still haven't been to church here. We can't seem to get the schedule right. Every time we try to go, it's changed to a different time or not happening that day. It's really strange. I just do devotional time on Sunday to get my church time in, but I really miss our church and hearing pastors speak. I hope you're keeping them updated. Tell them I miss them all and I'm thinking about them. Oh, and tell Becky I'm still wearing her bracelet. I love you to the moon and back. Uh, love it. Thank you. Give her a lot of love. I will. Let her know we are still praying with her yes. for her, for her success. <laughs> uh, this is her family. Yes. She feels very much that way. It's kind of scary because I don't know if anybody goes on Google Earth, but yesterday I went to Kostanga and just, just sit right in. Can't see exactly where she is, but I can sure see the view. And then it has a little time slider so you can go up to nighttime and you can see all the stars there. And it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Anyone else? I think many of us know Rick Bowden who grew up in his church, passed away on Friday. We don't know all the particulars. There are some that say it was an accident and some that say it was a heart attack. So we're not sure. He was a very involved in um, the Kansas Athletic Association. He was a member of that. And um, the funeral will be Tuesday at 1 o'clock in Topeka. The family had moved to Nebraska. He was also a representative at one sort of one point in time before he, after he quit teaching and uh, coaching, then he was with the Kansas Athletic Association. So, 
the funeral is at Westminster Presbyterian Church, and I have the address of anybody who's going to go to the funeral. <laughs> and Mert, have you heard the latest about Kathleen? Anything new? Uh, Wimbledon. <clears throat> Kathleen Wimbledon, who is a, right across from Roger and Virginia and just a little ways down from us, fell off of the combine Thursday morning, fell eight feet, and uh, had a rupture of the vertebrae, vertebrae in her back. They did surgery on Friday in. Uh, put all the pieces back together and screwed it together and put uh, hands on either side. And um, if I understood right, they haven't gotten her up yet because they get, need a brace on her back before they put her vertical. And so they'll do that tomorrow. And I think she's doing fine. It's just a lot of pain right now. Where is she? She's in Wesley at SCIU 218, which is Surgical Intensive Care Unit. Okay. And so let's keep uh, Kathleen Vindman in our prayers. Uh, the family of Rick Bowman. Um, let's pray that the Lord would have his soul in heaven, spirit. And let's pray for the family, the Holy Spirit would sustain them. Let's pray for the blacks that they would uh, get back home safely. Their entire trip would be successful. And they'd be home safely. Let's pray for Mary's family. Yeah, keep them in our prayers. And we'll keep Danette's home. Yeah. Danette, uh, yes. Yes, Danette is home. And I think Becky's been to visit her and some other friends. And her spirits are just pretty good on the back. And right. so we're thankful for that. They yes. did change her home. But we're thankful it wasn't anywhere else. She's all there. Keep the message in our prayer. And the other Gordon and the Nat the other Danetta as well. Let's keep them in our prayers. Anyone else? Please. Okay, let us uh, now go to God in prayer. God, you've heard the names of several people, and there are others that have not been mentioned, but uh, you know us all, you know our hearts, you know our minds, you know our needs, and we present them all to you today at the foot of the cross, and ask you, Lord Jesus, to watch over us, send your Holy Spirit to support and comfort us, comfort those who mourn, and comfort those who have lost loved ones. <coughs> in your perfect will. Gracious God, regret is such a frightening word. It assumes that we have we are broken, we are imperfect in our choices, and most of all, we are still vulnerable. Regret of our, regret of our past, regret of our mistakes, places so much pressure on us to perform and to do the right thing at all times. O oh Lord, we and the whole world depend completely on your mercy, your grace, your love. May the healing power of your unmerited favor towards us overcome whatever we face today and worry about for tomorrow. In gratitude, may we respond to all humanity with care and mercy, which can only come from you. Keep our eyes and our ears open to the needs of those around us. Soften our hearts that we might value people and stewardship more than position and prestige. No matter how we try to do right, we still make decisions we regret. But we know that you understand and your love is greater than our choices. You see us, you know us, and yet you love us. Help us to love you through it all to the end of our lives. Eternal God, we ask your mercy and blessing on each and every person who is here today. 
And we ask that you continue to bless those on our prayer list. Harry, support him and bless. Recovering from surgery, Grace, Gardana, Kay, Howard, Hazel, Kent, Guy, Becky, and Rick. Lord, uh, we thank you for keeping them going and supporting them and your Holy Spirit holding them up. Please continue to heal and bless all those in need of healing right now. Eternal God, we ask a blessing on our president and the cabinet and all those in authority over us, the Congress, the senators. We ask that you would have them know and lean towards Jesus Christ. Lead us knowing that Jesus Christ is Lord of all, the rich and the poor. Lord, we ask a blessing on all our authorities in Kansas, in our counties, in our cities. We ask for safe traveling mercies for those of us who travel from here to there and there to here. Be with us on the road. Keep us awake. Keep us alert. And take us to our destinations safely. Lord, we ask a blessing for all our families across the world. And we give you thanks and praise for family. May you continue to sustain family as was your wish. These are not the blessings we ask in Jesus' name who taught us how to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, for thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen again. One thing I forgot to mention, today is the crop walk. And I joined the crop walk, hunger walk, which is today at 2 o'clock in Hudson. Uh, Dorothy and I plan to be there. Uh, and we welcome any others who plan to be there and walk with us. Of all the times for me to sort of pull a calf muscle is this week. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been using my blue gels. Um, does anyone like to sponsor us or sponsor those who uh, uh, participate in the crop, crop walk? You don't have to do all five miles. You can just be there with, with the crowd. The kids run ahead and we the old folk just walk slowly behind. We catch them up at the end of five miles. And if you start and you can't make it, they have vehicles going back and forth. Uh, so if you, you're tired and you can't make it, you can just hop in the vehicle. The point is we are there. And anyone wants to sponsor that, and let's not forget, a lot of the money comes right back here to St. John for our food pantry. Uh, so we start at home with Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and uh, the utmost parts of the world. So Crop Walk today, we appreciate any sponsors. Let's write a check to Crop Walk. Okay, now let us uh, turn to hymn number 399, Take My Life and Let It Be, Consecrated Lord to Be.
have the bear, page 77, New Testament. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, we start at verse 19. The Gospel of Luke, 77, right at the back, with the few Bibles. In the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Listen to the word of God. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, full of sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me and send Lazarus poor man, to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things? And Lazarus is like man evil things. But now he is comforted here and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able to. And none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come to this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. This is the word of God. Thank you, God. Jesus Christ spoke a lot about hell. And so many of us refuse to uh, even believe or acknowledge that there is the reality of hell. So I want to, uh, to direct your attention today to that passage and the, my direction would be be the evangelist God calls us to. Be the spokesperson God calls us to be. Be the one God wants us to be to lead others to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Have others join us living in the presence of God in all of eternity. If only I knew then what I know now, I got. Uh, you ever heard that? Never said that. If only I knew then what I know now, I'd have. Yeah. You, can, you can fill in the blanks. Regrets. Regrets. Dumb moves. Stupid moves. Dumb decisions. Decisions made out of arrogance. Decisions made out of ignorance. Pride. False. I don't know about you, but uh, you know I'm guilty of a lot of this stuff. I know you're good guys, and uh, you make good decisions. And sometimes even a child can lead us and direct us. Psalm 82 says, Out of the mouths of, you know this, Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength. Now the new translation is, Out of the mouths of babes and unweaned infants, you have established strength. Well, I want to tell you about, uh, you know, Chelsea. We lived in a, another Chelsea. 
And uh, this is Chelsea Lehman, Chelsea London. And our neighbor next door had two houses where he lived, and the next one, and uh, he said, I'm going to sell you uh, these two properties. And I had the money in the bank. I had the money in the bank. I, had, I could have bought the two properties and still had money left over. And now I got to do something else. And uh, today, those same two properties, each one is worth 1.5 million pounds. Each property in Chelsea, London. You see, when you have 40 million people living in a space between Wichita and here, and there's no more land unless you build in the sea. What was a thousand pounds those days, or two thousand pounds is now a million pounds. There's no more land. I mean, the houses are there. You can't go build where there isn't land. If only I'd known now. <laughs> if only know then what I know now, I'd uh, you didn't fill it in. There's a guy named Ron Wayne. Anybody you heard of Ron Wayne? Well, Ron Wayne got together with two partners. Three of them got together and they borrowed $15,000. And Ron Wayne created the uh, logo for the company. And the logo was an apple and the little bite out of there with the little 10% was there. But Ron Wayne met these three guys. They went, three young guys, brilliant ideas, and they borrowed $15,000. and. Uh, Steve Jones and Steve Wozniak, they said, hey, we're on the line for 45% each run. All you're going to do is 10%. Yeah, okay, fine. No. I want my 10% back. So, Steve Jones and uh, Steve Wozniak bought back his 10%. You know what that $1,500 would be worth today? <laughs> Just 10% of Apple. Just 10%. And if he didn't sell any of his shares, it would be worth over forty billion dollars. If only Ron Wayne knew then what he knows now. I don't. Just for ten percent, just for fifteen hundred dollars, he's given up over forty billion dollars. And Apple has more cash in the bank today than the United States government. Apple has more cash in the bank than maybe 10 or 20 developing nations. Oh, an unmarried woman, you know, young women, they know that the, the clock's ticking and the biological clocks are ticking. And, uh, Time was going by, so she put an ad in Craigslist, one of the classified, wanted a husband. The next day she got a hundred responses. Everyone from a woman who said, you can have mine. <laughs> <laughs> if only those women knew then what they know now, they'd never marry the uh, bright guy. <laughs> well, you know, Jesus told us a story. And it's a story about a rich man and a poor man. And uh, the rich man wore purple, which was a big deal in those days. It's not like, you know, they didn't have factories and labs and things like that. Uh, purple was uh, very expensive. Came from a little snail or something. Boy, it was real expensive. So he dressed in uh, saddle robe. Anybody knows about saddle robe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, those are the best of English suits. Saddle robe suits. Or uh, geese. Um, or uh, you probably know Gucci. Or uh, one of the American uh, designers. Uh, he wore the best and he feasted sumptuously every day. And outside was a poor beggar, and he couldn't even give the beggar a slice of bread. Just ignored him, just stepped over him. 
But you know what happens, and it's going to happen to all of us. One day, uh, I hope you said you love me enough that when my turn comes, I'm going to be lying right here in front there in my casket, looking sweet. One day, all of us are going to go home. We're going to go home. And Bookman died, and the story began to change. And I, I thank God that death gives us an opportunity to correct the wrongs of this world. This story comes in Luke after Luke 15, where Jesus told three stories of lostness. First of all, there was a lost sheep. Remember the name at 99? Here and one was lost, one found. Then there's a lost coin. So the sheep was found, the coin, the woman struck and found the coin. Then there was a lost son, and the son came to his senses and came back to his father. So the son was lost, but he was found. And Jesus makes the story of lostness three times. One, two, three, one after the other. You should pay attention. Look. The Pharisees, the religious right, did not do that. They completely ignored it. When Jesus says something once, it's serious. Twice, double serious. Three times. So now he's got to go and talk about lostness that was not found. And this story was a critique about the religious leaders, the Pharisees who loved money and law. They would step over the poor, they would do whatever they can to get money from the poor, and they would get rich, and they'd be so wealthy and rich. They say, Well, God has blessed us with these riches. And then Jesus contrasts that with the story of the disciples. You and me, what should we do? Should we try to get rich at the expense of those people out there? Or should we be helping you? It's up to us. And what does Jesus expect or require of me or you, his disciples, that we should lead everyone to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? We should love the Lord our God with all our heart and mind, our strength and our soul, and we should love our neighbors as ourselves. Well, I was thinking, you know, we, we use the word neighbor in English, and uh, it means the person next to me, the person who lives in the house next to me, who kind of looks like me. And that's what we mean by neighbor. Now, if one of those folks move into our neighborhood and spoil the neighborhood, they're not our neighbors. The, my neighbor is someone who looks like me, talks like me, sort of has a nice job wherever it is, or a farm next door to me. That's my neighbor. That's the context we use for neighbor in our language today. But I'm pleased to say we serve a great God. We serve a loving God. We serve an awesome God. We serve a God who died for each and every one of us. Each and every human being. He died for our sins. He died to take it away. And he asked us to come to him in humility. He died and he wanted us to know the divine truth. And what is the divine truth before us? 1 Timothy 2.4 says, God our Savior wishes all people, not so, all people to be saved. Increasingly to perceive, and this is 1 Timothy 2 4, and recognize and discern and know precisely and correctly the divine truth. And the next verse goes on to say the divine truth. 1 Timothy 2 5, for there is only one God. Now I know we've got a lot of gods, you know, an 80,000 Mercedes or BMW. Or all the other nice things that are out right there, and you know, a nice job, and prestige, and power, and you know, all the things. Nothing wrong with them, by the way. Nothing wrong with them. It's just a case of 
Which God do we serve? For we know there is only one God and only one mediator between God and humans. The Bible says between God and man, between God and humans. And that is the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. A fact that was attested to at the right time. Now, we've been studying 1 Timothy this month. Now we're still in 1 Timothy. Initially, in this story, the, the rich man had a lavish lifestyle contrasted to the impoverishment of Lazarus. But you know what? Both men died. It's going to happen to all of us one of these days. That's the one thing that uh, equalizes us. You're going to die. And Hebrews 9, 27 says, It is appointed to all men, and the Bible says all men, but all people. It is appointed to all people who wants to die, and after that, the certain judgment. So we're going to be, we're going to die one day. These bodies are going to die. We're going to leave this earth, and we're going to go, and we're going to see Jesus. And he's got one or two answers. You go here or you go there. And where we go is dependent on how we perceive Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will judge each person after the death of our physical bodies. Well, after the death of these both of both of these men, the uh, their fortunes change. Here was this rich man enjoying life. Here was this poor man covered in sores. The rich man went to hell. No chance of future salvation. There's no repentance after death. He was condemned for all of eternity. He said, send Father Abraham. Send this poor man. He didn't even know his name. He didn't know who he was. He was just some poor uh, men out there covered in sores, hungry, paid no attention. Stepped over him to go to do a next business deal. Sent a poor man to uh, dip his finger in the water because I'm in this fire, this torment. Friends, there is a living hell. If only he knew then what he knows now. He now. So he becomes an evangelist. Hey, I'm going to do what I should have been doing. I should have been an evangelist before. I should have been taking care of God, loving God, serving my neighbors, helping the poor. Yeah, I should have been doing all I, I, Yeah, I should have. But did you? Did you? So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Father Abraham, send the poor man back to my brothers so that he could tell them to come to do right. Abraham says, no, 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 no. They have all the peas. They have the prophets. They have the priests. They have the pastors. They have good people. They have all this stuff around them. And yet they ignore, just like you did. And if someone goes back from the dead, ah, they're going to ignore that too. So let's leave things as they are. Let them decide for themselves whether their God or Jesus Christ is God. The problem isn't the lack of knowledge. It's their unwillingness to listen. It's their unwillingness to respond to the efforts of the Holy Spirit and the people around them who try to lead them. It's their false pride. It's their trust in their own good works. It's their refusal to put their faith in Jesus Christ. You know, just recently I went into a business locally here in St. John. And, um, as usual, uh, I uh, say hello and how you doing? And, you know, how things? And then I... Lead off with the left jab, you know, where'd you go to church? And, uh, you know, uh, do, you, do, do you believe in Jesus Christ? And, you know, then I do the right cross. And the guy says, well, God is going to look at my record. He 
has got this is a businessman in town. He's going to look at my record and he's going to say that I'm a good guy. So you're trusting in your own works. Yeah. Well, God knows. Oh, boy. Um, well, we, I, I left that day. and I, Every time I tried to say something, he led me down another rabbit trail. <laughs> and he had all these little rabbit trails going left and right and up and down and all around. And he didn't even want to mess with me. But this is someone you know. Someone you know. Someone you know very, very, very well. I said, well, why don't you come to church? Well, what's church going to do for me? And I remember President Kennedy saying, ask not what the country is going to do for me, but what I can do for the country. And I didn't want to be obnoxious, so eventually um, another customer came in. And I asked, is it a customer? She, he said, yes. Well, I'll, tell you what, I'll, I'll see you later. Well, here's someone, nice guy, very nice guy, thinks us church people are kind of like hypocritical. You know. It's something new, you know, I've never heard before. You guys are hypocrites, you know. I don't know, but, you know, uh, trusting like this rich man, and this guy is a businessman with lots of money, locally. I don't know how many of us have ever invited him to church. I don't know how many of us have told him about Jesus Christ. There's someone you know. And he's leaning and depending on his good works. Not knowing that the Bible says that our best efforts are nothing but filthy rags. Mm -hmm. And we depend on the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary. Mm -hmm. So on earth, this rich man had this business, and he was dressed in purple. And you know, another place for purple was when Jesus Christ was on was getting on the cross. They dressed him and robed him in, in purple. And we compare that purple and all that with the rags. The rags of Lazarus. You know, they're all black folks. Talk about rags to riches. And the old black spiritual says, he's called Negro spirituals, remember? When I get to heaven, I'm going to put on my robe and I'm going to dance all over God's heaven. And black people didn't have shoes, they sort of used burlap on their feet and cold and everything. And they said, When I get to heaven, I'm going to put on my shoes and I'm going to walk all over God's heaven. Things are going to change after we walk through the portals of death. The rich man never knew hunger. Now he'll never knew. Now he'll never know peace and contentment. He'll be burning up for the rest of eternity. Today we have the hunger, hunger crop walk. There are lots of people throughout the world today. Lots of children will die from starvation. Lots of children have quasi-yoka and their stomachs are full and their hair, their black hair is red and they're crying. And well, I don't have a lot of money. I'm, I'm poor. What? You know, you, everybody in here is richer than 90% of the world right now. Everyone in here. We have more than 90% of the people in the world today. I wish some of you would sponsor us and send that check to Hunger Crop Walk. I can't feed everyone, but I can send a little bit to people who are trying to feed the world. The rich man had good private health care, you know, just get my money, go to the doctor, pay him, he'd take care of me. The poor man, he had no affordable health care. Didn't even have salt for his sores. The dogs would come and lick his sores. 
ulcerated sores. He was like a refugee. He was destitute. He was without means. He was one of those who we don't want in our communities, our neighbors. You know, Jesus Christ looked at the masses and he had compassion. He looked at the masses and said, wow, look at these people. They are my people. They're created in my image. And he had compassion. Yet, so many of the rich have no compassion. So many people are going to go to hell because of lack of compassion. They're not going to hell because they're rich. Gosh, I, I, I ask you every so often to pray for Bill Gates and, and Warren Buffett and um, some of these guys with lots of wealth that God has blessed them with. I don't want them to go to hell. I want them to go to heaven. And so many of the rich are now beginning to understand that, you know, to get the pyramid higher, we need to feed some more people. We have to give people a hand up <coughs> rather than just neglect them as this rich man did. He ignored them. Wouldn't even give this poor man the scraps off of his table. Jesus Christ looks to us to be like him, to have the eyes of Jesus Christ, to have the heirs of Jesus Christ, to walk, have the feet of Jesus Christ. To help those in need. And then he wants us to tell everyone about Jesus Christ. So many of our missionary societies now have the right idea. We sort of go in, we first feed people, and then we tell them about Jesus Christ. And look at this church. Fantastic. You do 50, 60 dresses for little, little girls who have no dresses. And then... We buy underwear for these little girls in countries, and, and, and you know, we have specialized in one particular country here, and we, you know, you, you just lay the dresses out on the, old, on the rails and all, over there, and what a fantastic response you have to those in need. I could just see those little girls putting on those dresses and saying, wow, this came from some church. Somewhere in America, they heard about America. They have heard about Kansas. They heard about America. And you ladies come here and you do such a fantastic job. Give of your time and your talents. You go and you buy materials. You buy thread. You, you put it on the machine. You do all that for the glory of God. And we pray that each girl that receives one of those dresses would receive Jesus Christ by faith. I encourage you to keep on keeping on. I encourage you to tell everyone about Jesus Christ. I encourage you to remember our term neighbor, uh, which uh, the way we use it, somebody around us. And talk to the neighbors in business around here. Talk to the neighbors, the farmers around here. Talk to the people who work around here. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Never mind the embarrassment. You know, and I'm pointing at you. You go tell them. And, you know, there's three fingers pointing back at me. There. <laughs> Lots of times I did not do that. Lots of times I regret. And I'm telling you because sometimes I didn't tell myself. Don't tell the world about Jesus Christ. I encourage you to be the evangelist. God calls you to be. Amen. Uh, let us turn to uh, Affirmation of Faith in 882, which is in the, in the hymnals, right in the back, 882. Right at the back, M882. The hymnals right in front of you. I encourage you to stand if able and repeat after me or with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under the conscience of Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God. And will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
Together, beloved God, who richly provides for our needs and enjoyment, thank you for your many gifts. You have trusted us with our lives, with this world, and with your love. May the gifts we offer to you today be used for your service and your glory. Help us store up our